In this tutorial, you'll learn how to model, rig, and animate your very own character. You can make it walk, jump, and rotate fully procedurally. So we'll be working out of Blender 3.0. So let's just jump in here and delete everything in the default scene and add in a plane. This is going to act as the leg. So if you jump into edit mode, press M and merge everything at center, we can now work with this one uh, vertice and start extruding this to create a leg shape. So I'm going to come over here to the modifier tab and add a skin modifier. I'm also going to go into x-ray mode, so alt Z to go into x-ray mode and I'm just going to start extruding this on the Z axis into a general leg shape. So generally I like to push it across this foot here, press control A to scale that in to make that foot. And then for these other bones, I'll just push these down into a more general leg shape. I'll scale this one up here. And now we have a very, very basic leg. So now we've basically just created some bones that we can start messing around with and actually create them into an armature. There's a little button here on the skin modifier to say create armature. So we can click that. And now we basically have the option to create inverse kinematics on our armature. So let's come up here to pose mode, make sure your armature is selected and then just click on this first bone and come through to pose, inverse kinematics, add IK to bone. And then another menu will pop up and it'll say add IK. We can click to new empty object. There we go. And you'll see straight away, it's created a relation with this top bone. So if we come out of here to object mode, You'll see as soon as we start moving around this empty object, we've got this really cool rig for the leg that we can start playing with. And you'll also see that it's connected not only on the empty, but also to the rest of the rig. So you can actually create some cool little jumping animations with it. So that's great. So now we want to select everything, shift D, and we'll duplicate it across to the other side. And basically we want to make these guys kind of walk like this, but we don't want to manually hand animate it. So what we can do is add in a curve. We'll add a circle. I'm going to just rotate this on the Y axis, 90 degrees and scale it in just a bit. Um, so now what we can do is kind of line it up with the empty object, something like there. And I'll also duplicate this across to the other empty. And now what we want to do is constrain the IK empty objects to this circular path. So click on your empty object. Let's come down here to object constraints and we're going to add in a follow path constraint. So what we can do is make the target the circle. You'll see immediately once we start playing with the offset, you can kind of see what's happening. It's just following the path. So what we want to do straight away is actually clear the location data of this empty. So what you can do is press Alt G and that'll just snap back to the circle. And now it'll look a little bit more, more organic. But you kind of see it's going sort of below the floor plane, which is not what we want. So to fix that, I'm going to select both of the circles, jump into edit mode. I'm just going to go to the orthographic view by pressing three on my number pad. And I'm just going to select these two handles here. And we're just going to change the handle type. So you can come up here to control points, set the handle type to vector. And again, just to the, just press three on your numpad for the orthographic view. And we're just gonna scale this, scale this on the Y axis to make it more of a circular shape. And then lastly, these two points here, we can just move them up to the center. So if it's still looking like this, you can just come through and make sure these are all selected and then just double check that the handle type is vector. There we go. And now I'm just gonna bring this up to ground level. And again, I'm just going to grab these handles and scale them on the Y axis to make it a little bit more circular. So now if I select this empty and we change the offset, you'll see it's more of a walking animation now. So now we just have to duplicate that on this side. So grab this other empty, add another follow path constraint, check the circle that we've created. And again, we have to clear the path Clear the location data, otherwise it'll be a bit janky. So Alt G and there we go. So now instead of having to manually 
keyframe this forever, we can actually use a cool little trick. So let's just create a full walk cycle. So let's go to frame 10, enter in a keyframe here, go to frame 30, change this to 100, add another keyframe, and you'll see it does its full rotation and then just kind of stops. So to fix that, we can press Shift E and click Linear Extrapolation. So basically what that does is it will continue uh, forever the keyframes that we've just created, which is pretty cool. So let's do the same on this constraint. So let's go to frame 20 to be the interval between 10 and 30. And let's just start keyframing. So let's go to zero on the offset, create a keyframe, and then go to frame 40 and make this 100, add another keyframe. And again, we'll make this shift E linear extrapolation. And now we've got a really cool walking rig that we can start playing with. That's pretty cool, but we don't want just some walking legs on our screen. We want a full character rig to play with. So let's move on to making the actual body, then the arms and the head. So let's just jump in and add a cube. I'm gonna move this up above the legs here and jump into edit mode, add in a loop cut. And then we're basically just going to add in some modifiers. So just the stock standard bevel and subdivision. We'll shade that smooth, give it a couple more segments on the bevel and back into edit mode. We're just going to bring the torso up a bit more, select our loop cut here and just bring that in for a more stylized look. Um, and then lastly, on the top, we're just going to scale this up so it's more of a um, chest area. Cool. So we have a body here. I'll just bring that in and scale it down a bit more. And now what we can do is actually grab our legs and our bones that we've created. Shift click our torso and press Control P to parent the legs to the torso. So now if we start playing and we start to rotate this, you can kind of see what's happening. Um, it's completely following everything that the torso is doing, which is really powerful and really cool. We'll get back to actually procedurally animating everything shortly, but let's just create the arms and then lastly the head. So let's just jump in, create another plane, bring this up to about his arm level, and let's just jump into edit mode again, M to merge everything at center. And what we want to do now is basically create the shape of an arm. So again, let's add in a skin modifier. Let's go into X-ray mode, make sure we're on the vertice selection so we can select that vertice. And then we're just going to extrude this up. And um, this time we're just going to select everything, right click subdivide. And I think the optimal amount of bones for this one is five. So let's just do three, uh, three number of cuts so that we have a total of five points. Left click to select that and then Let's just start shaping out this arm. So at the top, I'm just going to scale this a bit. I'm going to bring these two down on the Z axis. And this one, I'm going to scale in. This one, I'm going to also scale in. And I'm just going to rotate it like so. There we go. So we have a very basic arm. Um, again, we can add a bevel and a subdivision modifier to this. If you do want this to be showing as smooth shading, you can't actually do it here. You have to do it on the skin modifier. So just click that checkbox and then let's just create the armature. So create armature. Again, we'll jump into pose mode, click this first bone that we've created, and then we can go pose, inverse kinematics, add IK to bone, and then to new empty object. So again, we're going to do the same process, but alter it just slightly. So you can kind of Test your rig out quickly. Looks to be working pretty good. So let's just select all of this here. Bring it down to the arm level. And this is actually a pretty big arm. I think I'm gonna scale it down just a bit. So I'll just duplicate this. So Shift D, bring it across to the other side. There we go. And straight away, let's parent this to the main body object here. So select everything, Control P set parent to object. So now everything is following. And for the arm swings, we're actually gonna use um, some drivers. So 
first of all, we need a curve for it to follow. So let's go Shift A, Curve. We'll use a NURBS curve. So basically it's going to swing along this motion here. So I'm just going to rotate it into position and move it into position. There we go. We can always adjust this position later. And now basically we want to follow the same steps as the foot. So select your constraint here. Let's come to object constraints. We'll move over to the follow path. And let's just eyedrop a tool to this curve that we created. Again, we'll need to clear the location data. So Alt G, fix that. And if we start playing with this, you can kind of see it's not working fully as intended. Uh, so what we need to do is make sure that the fixed position is checked and also follow curve is checked. So now it's kind of constrained to that curve. Um, but what we want to actually do instead of hand animating it, because it technically needs to go from zero to one and then one to zero, um, what we can do is put a driver function in. So on the offset factor, you can click here to edit it and just type in hashtag sign parentheses frame divided by five, and then you can close the parentheses. Just press enter. And now you'll kind of see what is happening. So it's just basically, it's a sine wave function and it's basically driving the motion of the arm. So if you want to tweak it, you can actually just move the curve to wherever you'd like it to be and even rotate it. So maybe something like this is actually pretty good, pretty natural. So now all we need to do is just duplicate this across to the other side. So shift D, move it across and line it up with the other one. And let's just repeat the process. So select your constraint, add the follow path constraint, and then just eye drop a tool to this curve. Again, all the location data is a bit funky, so Alt G to clear that. First, we just need to make sure fixed position and follow curve is enabled. And then we can jump in here to the offset factor and enter the function again. So hashtag sign parentheses frame. And this time it's going to be divided by negative five and then close the parentheses. The reason why we want negative five is so that it does the opposite of the other arm. And we have a basically fully working walking rig here now, which is really, really cool. So now that that's all done, we can add in the head and then move on to the procedural animation, which is like the sweet spice on top. So let's just go ship day mesh cube. Let's bring this up to his head area. So let's add, add a bevel and a subdivision surface. Let's just shade that smooth and add a few more segments to that, that bevel. I'm just gonna jump into edit mode and select the top face here. Press control B to bevel it and clamp that. Something like that. I'm just gonna make his head a little bigger. There we go. Awesome. So now we can just parent that to the body. And we now have this really cool, fully created character to start working with. So let's move on to the procedural animation side of things. So to start, let's just create a keyframe here for location and rotation. And let's jump into the graph editor. So in here, as long as we have some kind of keyframe to work with, we have all of these data points that we can start putting procedural um, animation points to, which is really, really cool and really powerful. So to actually do that, let's press N on our keyboard to open up this little area here. I'm going to start off with the X location. So make sure this is selected and just come through here to the modifiers. And now we can add in some noise. So basically we want to play with the scale and the strength to make this sort of fine tuned because straight away if we start playing you'll see it's very chaotic so to fix that you can make the strength to something like 0.2 and you can increase the scale so it's not as harsh so it's very subtle at the moment but it'll get more interesting once we put all this on the other um, data points so let's copy this noise modifier just by clicking this button here and we're going to come through to the y location and paste it so again, we can fine tune this. So we can maybe increase the strength a bit, change the scale, change the offset. 
and again, copy that, come to Z and paste it. And now you can kind of see the real power of this sort of procedural setup is that you don't really have to do any of this animation. It gives it a lot more organic feeling and you're getting it all for free basically. So let's just move the offset on this one, change the strength a bit more. And then let's just also do this for all of the rotations. So copy that, come down to the X rotation, paste it. I'm just gonna change the offset a bit. Come down to the Y rotation, paste it, change the offset. And then lastly, the Z rotation, paste, change the offset. I might even change the strength a bit for the Z and the Y. And there we go, we have basically a fully walking little guy here. But to make this even more cool and maybe give him a bit of an attitude, there's another modifier that we can add on the Z location. So come to Z location, gonna add a modifier and it's gonna be a built-in function. So as soon as you click that, it's gonna go all wacky. Um, but all you need to do is just come down to built-in function and select additive. And now you can see what is happening. So we need to change uh, probably the amplitude, make it a little less intense. There we go. So that's pretty, it's still a little intense. So we can actually change the phase here and just bring that down a fair ways. Um, and you can fine tweak this to whatever you need. But basically, that is the entire um, procedural part of this animation all set up. And you can also do this to the head, so it's just not a static floating thing. Let's just go ahead and do that. So let's just insert a keyframe. And we're just going to do the same thing. So let's go to the rotation. Let's paste that. Let's go to the Y rotation, paste it, change the offset. Come through to the X rotation, paste it, change the offset a bit change the strength and the scale. And it's really up to you how intense you want this to look. So right now it's a little too intense on the head. So I'm just gonna change all the strength down a bit. And then again, the location we can, I'm just gonna copy the X here, come to Z, paste it. Come to the Y location, paste it. And the X location and paste it as well. And there we go. We have a really cool and powerful rig ready to drop into any scene really. So if you actually want to have this guy walk across your scene, to do that you have to add in another empty object. So let's go Shift A, Empty, let's go Sphere, and let's just right click, adjust empty display size and just make it a little bigger. Move that to the middle here. And now all we need to do is select all of the curve paths that we created. So these two for the hands and these two for the feet and also the main body and we just need to shift click the empty we made and parent everything so control p set object to set parent to object and now we can basically animate this empty object um, to walk across our scene so if you want you can actually just animate this by hand so come here on frame zero just enter a keyframe of location and rotation bring it across move him across and then do again I location rotation and that is basically how you would animate him to walk across your scene I'd recommend just making sure there's no kind of sliding happening you'd have to play with the keyframes and sort of adjust them so that he's not sliding along the floor um, but with all that said you now have this collection which you can just rename as walking animation and if you wanted to you can just open up a new scene drop this collection in and it'll be working as intended. Now, if you liked that video, you're definitely going to love this one on screen.